This is a project showing you the linking of type, type and lettering and topography, that sort of thing, in with the uh, creative areas of Photoshop. You have pictures of the foreground, middle ground, and background. You can do all kinds of things to make the visual interesting. But eventually, you're going to put lettering to it in the form of a headline, a title, uh, a poster, phrase, uh, something that's going to be there that's part of the lettering. This particular project is a five-panel dust jacket. When you buy a hard brown book, it has a piece of paper that wraps around the, from the front cover to the back cover. It has an inside spine, the front cover, on um, the inside flap, the front cover, the spine, which is down the middle, which you see when it's sitting on a library shelf, the back cover, and the back spine. Now, this image here is the front cover of a um, book about a coach who uh, probably was at Ohio State since that's the logo there. And um, coach is probably well enough known that his picture says his name rather than have to put his name there, just coach. And then the subheadline, the boss of Saturdays, and then the name of the person who wrote it up here. Now, looking at all of this, um, layers that comprise this thing. Let's, let's turn them all off and analyze what we've got going here so far. The background is green. Grass, uh, football, it works. Now I've got a background image of a stadium with uh, no people in it, but it's a stadium and I've, I've cut it to uh, sit in this upper uh, two-thirds now remember, I've got a lot of stuff there, like the coach's um, head is going to cover quite a bit of the, of the, uh, of the uh, front cover area. And so when the head's not there, you see there's goal posts and there's this stuff here that it's going to cover up. What I'm mainly interested in is just this corner of the stadium. So when I do that, I've got the same color green as the stadium when you start looking in the mar yard marker lines here, and it blends in fairly well. This open space down here, I don't have anything to put there, so I've got this blue grid decoration. There's just blue squares with a gradient going from light to dark. They don't mean anything. They're just a graphic pattern in the background to fill up some space that once was boring, and now it's not so boring because it has some decoration in it. Uh, I've got the um, Ohio State logo. And there's some effects on it. It has, it has a little bit of an outer glow. If I turn that off, you can see it's, uh, that's what it looks like without it. With, with the glow, it's a bit more electric or neon-y or shiny. And uh, that gives it a bit more interest. Underneath uh, that logo, I've got the word coach. Now, there's some um, things about this that I've worked with, too. The letters are very tight together. The kerning is pretty close. I've got a drop shadow and a stroke on it. So there's the wording, and of course I'm using the color that is directly taken off of the, uh, with, with the um, eyedropper tool. I went directly there and got that uh, in the foreground color and made that part of the word coach. But uh, to jazz up the coach a little bit, the word, I put a stroke on it. And um, the stroke is one of the filters down here. There's a stroke I use a lot. There's the drop shadow. There's the uh, uh, bevel and emboss. There's the outer glow. You might want to practice or fiddle or experiment with that against letters. And you can add two, maybe even three. But I've got the a stroke working here. And the stroke just puts a, uh, you can control the color and the size. It puts an edge on this. And uh, Ohio State's colors are red and gray. It's all a little gray um, edging on the letters works pretty well. And then I put the, um, the drop shadow uh, effect in. You can see without it, it's not very much because it's against a black jacket, but with it, it's just enough to um, take away some of the light color so it's a higher contrast. The name of the author is up on the top on this one, and he too has uh, some... Uh, the drop shadow effect is to separate it. See, alone, it's against that backdrop. It's a pretty busy backdrop. But with the shadow, it, it separates it just a touch so that uh, you can read it better. Then um, that adds up to all the parts that makes the front cover. Of course, uh, the coach's head has been cut out. 
from uh, another source. Here's his head and, and there's the backdrop. Um, I have the original picture here that I always save. It has this backdrop to it and I, I cut that away so I could see something around his head. But I always save a, an original copy just in case I have to go back and fix something. But here he is with, um, notice I've cut his glasses out even so that there was some reflection with the other one. See the reflection here and it gets a little confusing to what that is. So I uh, cut around his hair and let a little frizzle stuff happen. Cut into his, um, his eyelashes and eye and hair on the back on the other side of his ear. But uh, that then becomes the image that I'm going to put in, uh, in, the, in the poster here. With the lettering. One other thing, I've got another word here. Let me show you. That's not where that word goes. It goes down here. But if I want to work that word, it's it's too far apart as I typed it. The kerning is too wide. So click, click, click. Get the whole thing selected with the type tool. And then hold on the option key and the left arrow brings them all together equidistantly, supposedly. Now the A and the C, CH are about to touch. These are all right. The C here is a little further away, so just click your cursor once between the C and the O and just change that kern, that uh, left arrow uh, brings it a little tighter. And, and then you can adjust as you need it, uh, just so that it looks all well together. Now, with that done, you can go down into the filters and say, give me a bevel. And the bevel comes up. Now, when the bevel happens, you have to set where the light's coming from, the upper left or upper right. I'm going to go upper left. And it's, it's a red word, so it might not have a white highlight. So I'll click on that white highlight and go in here and say, give me a, a, a dull red for that highlight on there. And then the, the uh, shadow mode is not going to be black necessarily. Let's go to a deep, dark red. And then you can play with the um, size here and you can see what that's going to look like and you can go back and forth with how much bevel you're going to get it, give it and how deep it's going to be. You can override it to some descent like with size you can you know, run over it and get kind of a poachy looking letter. Another thing you can do, we're on an inner, inner bevel. I always use, or I, I sometimes use the emboss where it's being pushed out of the background like it was being pushed from the rear. So it's got a, an edge coming out right out of the photograph and that works pretty good. You can look at these other um, embossing. There's a pillow emboss like it's stamped from the front and there's uh, the outer bevel or say an inner bevel so it looks like it's uh, reducing down instead of expanding out and uh, the stroke emboss uh, gives you other features but I, in this case I'm using the uh, outer bevel and um, oh no let's see what I was using. I was using the emboss yeah Okay, and that, or whatever, and it works. Now, you don't have to use it. You can put, like I had down here, that there's the uh, stroke edge and then a little drop shadow. To, but if you want to push it around, you know, play with it and see what you get. And the lettering, then, is, is part of the exercise with the complete Photoshop uh, commercial product. And the lettering will be not quite as... Uh, uh, controllable as it is in Illustrator, but it, it works for the package of a photograph that you're making here. So I'm going to turn Coach off so he's not showing, that's not showing in, the, in this original. Uh, let's look at other parts of this uh, dust jacket. This is the inside front flap. And you take the graphics like the David A. Sweeney and the Ohio State logo you know, there's that part, and there's the logo part, and there's the coach word, and then the boss of Saturday is made into two lines. And then you add body copy. And in this case, it's going to be a yellow um, copy against the green backdrop. In the printing process, the paper is white. You print the yellow lettering, and then you print the green on top of that, and it, uh, it covers all around the yellow. Talk to your printer about that, but uh, here's what it looks like. The front flap is uh, about the book. The back flap is usually about the author. So that's the panel. Now they all get fit together, but that's the panel for uh, the front flap. Here's the spine, the piece that goes in the um, middle of the front cover and the back cover. So this is what you see uh, on the shelf if it's in you know, with a bunch of books. 
Traditionally, the name is going from top to bottom. Don't stack the letters one on top of the other. Turn them sideways so that you have to turn your head to the right and make that work. And um, Ohio State logo is right reading because it's uh, it looks funny sideways, but it's from you know Ohio State. But when you turn your head sideways, you read coach and the author. Another thing, that by tradition, the publisher down here is right reading, so that if you're looking at it on the bookshelf. You see the publisher's name right reading. Um, here's the back picture, the picture that will be cropped and placed on the back cover of the dust jacket. Obviously a picture of the stadium with full of people and uh, the band lined up and here comes the team running through the cheerleaders and the flag and it's you know a big exciting day at the big stadium at the Ohio State. Um, the last one is the um, well, not the last one, but this one is the logo that I have pulled out of um, the internet from someplace, and I've added a bit of a drop shadow to it, a little more depth, a little more interesting, and I'll use that then on the places where I need that logo from uh, Ohio State. The last uh, one I want to show you here is the complete uh, cover dust jacket. Here's the first panel, the second panel, the third panel, the fourth panel, the rear, back panel, back flap. So this goes inside the flap, inside the back flap. Now when you see this, you generally always just see the cover. If it's on the uh, bookshelf, it is uh, you, all you see is this in the library shelf. Um, and then the back panel here is there just to add some excitement when you're picking the book up and deciding whether you want to buy it or not. It's printed all in one piece of paper, and then it's folded, not cut, but folded here and here and here and here so that it fits the size of the uh, end up book covering that is in the hardbound book edition. Now, this could also be used in the softbound, same print, but on a different piece of paper that's actually glued and, and uh, worked into the book itself and then trimmed to fit. So, um, the dust jacket. You can see the lettering is important on each panel, except for this back panel. Now, we might have some lettering here that says Ohio State Football Stadium or something. Maybe up here in the, in the sky it would say that. But you can see that lettering using the text tool and all of its uh, uh, techniques to apply and change names of fonts. You, know, you select the font. You can go up here and get a lot of information that you need, or you can open this button right here and get uh, a much wider uh, name and type and, and, and uh, all, all the things you need to do. It's not as quite as extensive as Illustrator because you do more type, body type in Illustrator, but it does give you all the tools and you, you play with that. As soon as I'm finished with the type, I generally will let that go away so I don't clutter up my screen and I can certainly get it here very quickly if I want it. So your um, assignment is to make a front panel only. Don't worry about all this other stuff. I just wanted you to see it, but make a front cover that would go on a dust jacket or a front cover of a paperback book using a background image like the stadium, the object of the book, the person, the object, you know, it could be an airplane, a car, a, an orange, a title that is uh, sufficient to go with the uh, publication, a subheadline that gives you a little bit more about the title, what it's about, and then the name of an author. You can use any name you want. So that's the uh, background, the foreground, uh, the title, the subheadline to the title, and the author's name. The Ohio State logo is the throw in. You won't always have a logo to go with it or some emblem. If there's one there or one available or one you can think of, put it in. But make this cover. It's generally going to be like 9 by 7. Don't get it too large so it doesn't make a large document as you turn this thing, stuff back in over the, the internet. So um, that's what a dust jacket looks like with a lot of pictures and a lot of type placed and designed into the image.